I've just put it on mute for right now. So. Okay, good morning, everybody, and welcome again to Agribition. Um, we have a special treat today, and uh, we are watching a sheep shearing demonstration. So we have Jason, that's going to be the sheep shearer, shearer and we have Bethan, who is going to be commentating on what is happening. So um, we are going to get the sheep over to Jason, and we are going to get started. Okay, here we go. So we're going to shear this one lamb here. I'm Bethan and that's Jason. So we shear sheep once a year for hygiene purposes and for health of the sheep. So we sit them on their butts just like Jason's showing and this is to keep them comfortable. So he's going to start by taking off their belly wool which is like the wool on our belly and then round our crutch. This is poor quality and it's normally dirtier wool. So we get rid of it first. This gets thrown off to the side and it's not used for making clothes or anything. He just goes nice and slow. He's keeping the lamb quiet. He's keeping her skin tight. You can see his feet are always moving and that's just to make sure that the lamb is staying still, keeping her off her tailbone, which means she sits content and doesn't want to kick or fight. This little lamb that he's shearing, this is her first time ever being shorn. So sometimes they're a little nervous about it. It's just like getting your first haircut. But if we keep them in the right position, they normally stay sat pretty quiet. He's just going to clean the top of her tail there, so that's for when he rolls her onto the other hip, he can see. He's just cleaning this. This is where we actually start into the wool that we go to making clothing in that. This is their first blow up the leg. So the whole time his feet are moving to keep that lamb in position, his left hand is always keeping the skin tight. You can see that when he puts his hand in places, it kind of pushes on a pressure point, which stretches her legs out, which makes it easier for shearing. He's rolling her over onto her other hip, which is keeping her comfortable. Now he's going to move up into her neck blows, is what we call them. So we go start on the brisket right out underneath her chin. Shearing is a lot like a dance. It takes a while to learn, but once you've learned it, it's pretty fun. He'll open up her neck there. So about three blows under their neck, four blows. Every shearer shears a little bit different. Jason and I have been shearing together for four years now, probably. Cleans out the side of her cheek. You'll go under the bottom of her ear here. And across the top of her head, trying to make her look all pretty. So over her shoulder. He'll start to turn her here to lay her down for the long blows. And you can see he's still always moving, pulling the skin tight. Hopefully by the end, this fleece will come off all in one piece. And now he's gonna turn her. We lay them down, this is called the long blows. This is where you do the most efficient work. You can take the most wool off. And now he should, with his right foot, step over, and then he'll put her head between. And now he's cleaning out the second shoulder. You can see that she's still curled up, kind of like a ball. It's to keep her comfortable, keep her skin tight so it's easy to take the wool off. His left hand is always working to move her around, cleaning out her armpits. He'll pick her up here shortly, and then he's pretty much done. There. Oh, 
And now he's just going to finish up here on the off side. And about two and a half more blows. <laughs> off the tail. And done. So it's pretty fast, pretty clean. And that's it. That is one sheep shorn. How fast does the fleece grow back? The question asked was, how fast does the fleece grow back? So we shear the sheep once a year for most breeds of sheep. So in, in a year, they'll grow about five to seven pounds of fleece. There's certain breeds that need done twice a year, but on the average, about a year. But that lamb there, so in about three days, it'll have enough wool grown back and its fat will change, so it'll be warm outside. They kind of change how quickly they grow wool right at the start. Yeah, so on this lamb, about the weight, because it was a first time and she's quite a young ewe, it would only be about three pounds of fleece. But of the main shearing we do in a year, it's between five and seven pounds annually that they grow. Okay, and what is that fleece used for? The question asked was, what are these fleeces used for? And this type, so on this ewe, they're a down breed is what it's called, so it's not the highest quality wool. So this is normally sent across to China and made into insulation, but there is breeds that will make the, like your socks and your sweaters, blankets, but this one will probably just be sent away and used as maybe organic matter in your gardens for fertilizer, but mostly clothing and organic stuff. So. Okay, great. So, when you have a wool um, fleece sweater, that's okay. <clears throat> The question asked is if you have a wool sweater that say is pink, is that from a pink sheep? No, we usually use white fleeces and then we can dye them pink. So their sheep come in mostly whites, grays, blacks, browns. Browns and grays don't take dye, but the white fleeces, you can dye them whatever color we want. We could have a rainbow sheep if we wanted to. So the question asked was how many sheep can I shear in a day? And my personal best right now is 160 in seven hours, but my push for next year is to be able to do 200 in a day. So oh, wow. I can shear about 25 an hour. Okay, so I was gonna ask how many minutes it takes per, so. Yeah, so about, so the question is how many minutes it takes and depending on the sheep, but I'm about two minutes to four minutes a sheep. And are sheep usually um, cooperative? So the question is how like cooperative sheep are to be shorn. Most of the time they sit quite quiet. As you can see when Jason was shearing, he's always moving his feet and that is fully for the sheep for comfortable. We keep them turned kind of in a C shape and let's keep them off their tailbone. Young ones that haven't been shorn before normally put up the most fight because they're nervous. But if we can keep them in the right position, they don't kick very much. So the question is, are sheep cold after they're shorn? For the, depending on the weather, most sheep are shorn between May and August, so when it's really warm outside, so there's not a concern. But these ones here shorn in the winter, they'll go into a barn for about 10 days and then they'll have enough fleece that they can go outside. What happens if um, sheep are not shorn? What happens if sheep aren't shorn? So it's the same as our hair. Their wool just keeps growing and growing. So if they're not shorn, they're really uncomfortable. It's like being outside in the summer with two winter jackets on. They get really hot. They can't clean themselves properly, so they'll get dirty. And it's just not as hygienic. So we shear them to keep them comfortable. Okay. <clears throat> Are there different types of clippers you use to shear? So there, the question is if there's different typer, types of clippers that we use, and there is. So Jason's running a Lister machine, so his was green and black at the top. I run a Longhorn, so mine's bright red. There's all different types of engines that we can start. It's the same as like cars and trucks, all different models. And then we have one that's just a handheld machine called an electric. It plugs just into an outlet. So it's just 
just the machine and engine is all in one. And then you can get ones that run off battery packs. So it's pretty, you can get what works for you. Okay, and how did you learn to shear? So the question is, how did I learn to shear? And I learned from my dad who came, immigrated to Canada from Wales. He sheared in Wales and then he broke his rib when I was about 16, so couldn't shear our sheep. So I learned off of him and then I've just picked it up along the way from other people, taken a few courses and classes, and now I actually teach a course next weekend, so. Awesome, good. And how many sheep shearers are there in Saskatchewan or Canada? So the question is how many sheep shearers are there in Saskatchewan or Canada? The easiest answer is there's not enough, but in Saskatchewan I think there's about 15, and then in Manitoba we have about 10 but the number of sheep are increasing and the number of shearers is decreasing and the number of shearers that are a younger generation isn't enough. So like my dad, he's still shearing, but he's wanting to retire, but there's lots of sheep to shear. So there's not enough shearers, but we're managing. Pardon? Uh, oh, I'm just reminding them to put their questions in the chat. So um, we have some sheep behind us that are getting flushed up, it looks like. So are they, um, what are these sheep doing here today? So the sheep behind us, the question was, what are they doing? These ones are getting ready to go get shown. So they'll show in their breed classes. So we're gonna, they're getting their last little haircut and their wool all sorted and pretty. So when they go into the class to show, they look their best. We're showing them for their breed qualities, how they represent the breed, how they walk, like their overall well-being. Okay, so we, you talked a little bit about the quality of fleece at, mm -hmm. the, at the start of this. So how can you tell um, what the different quality is like? So the question is about how the quality of the wool, how do we tell the difference? I don't know as much as I could about wool. I've taken a one course on it. So wool, there's people out there that have their degrees in wool. It's all, it's a very, very fine art to be able to tell the differences. But on like the sheep that was shorn today, that was a down breed. So their wool is poor quality. And you can tell that by when, if you look at the wool, feel it, it'll feel a bit more scratchy. And that's because of the number of fibers. So the higher the fiber count, so the more pieces of wool there is per square inch, the softer it is. So like your merinos and your rambolets, those are what we're used to make our insulated clothes that touch our skin, it's really soft. And then like what was shorn today, that poorer quality is what we make our jackets out of, so it doesn't touch your skin. So it's still warm and keeps you dry, but it just doesn't have that higher fiber count, so it's a little more itchy. But really it's the feel of the wool that tells the quality as much as I know. There's a lot more about it, but I just don't know enough. Okay, and then maybe can you talk a little bit about how wool is processed? So, and yep. Wool the question is like, if I could talk a bit about processing wool. So in Canada, there's not very many wool mills is what they're called. So the wool off the sheep, we throw it on a big table and it's called skirting. So we take out all like the dirty material, like we call it chaff, which is bits of straw and grass and hay or bits of dirt. That's all taken out and it goes into a separate bin. So it gets something else done with it. So then you have a nice big clean fleece. We roll those and they're all weighed individually. And we send those off to either a mill in Canada or China does a lot of it and it gets washed and then it'll get carted. So there's two big machines with like hooks that pull it apart and make it into like a big pillow. And then it gets spun really fine and it'll be make it into yarn. And then you can knit with it, sew with it. It can be laid out and then pushed together. And that's called felting. It'll kind of make a material like what I'm wearing. So. Okay, we talked a little bit yesterday about different types of sheep. Um, but the sheep that you raise, are they all wool or are there different types? So there is, to, the question is about the types of sheep, if they're all wool sheep. I do breed all wool sheep, but there is two breeds in Canada that are known as hair sheep. So the Dorper, they shed their wool and kind of keep a hair. And then there's Katahdin's, which there's some here. They're hair sheep, they don't grow wool. 
But at my farm, we have just wool sheep, and ours are just like the domestic wool, not that high quality. So there's two different types of sheep, as in wool breeds and meat breeds. And I breed mostly my sheep for meat. Wool is just a second product that they produce. Okay. And what do you feed the sheep on your farm? So the question is, what do I feed my sheep? So during the summer, they are grazing. They're on grass out on pasture. We rotationally graze them. And then in the winter, they graze, they are eating hay, which is grass that we've cut in the summer and then dried down and put it into big bales. And then they get lick tubs, which is like their vitamins, like a multivitamin we take. These lick tubs are sheep eat. And then we also supplement them on grain in the really cold months or right before breeding and that, so that they're increasing their energy levels when I need it. So the question is about like care for sheep and how we make sure that they're managing and doing well. A lot of it is we, it's called body condition scoring is what we do. So we'll run our sheep in and then you can feel their backs and it'll tell you how much fat they're covering. So you can feel that, see how fat they are, see where they're standing. And then it is just an overall, we look at the health of them. Are there any coughing, runny noses? Are they coming up for feed? and? And then throughout the winters is the most crucial months of like checking on what they're eating. So I went to college for three years in Alberta to learn a little bit more about husbandry and looking after sheep. So I can do a bit more of like the math on figuring out how much they need to eat per day. And if one say slows down eating, then we know something's wrong. But really it is, we watch the sheep and we monitor them. You check on them quite often, you run them through the barn and you can tell when they're poorly, they have runny noses or a cough, but in the winter months we have to do a bit more of the maintenance, feeding them a little bit more just because of the cold and there we have barns but they're still outside, we don't have the furnaces for the sheep. Okay. Um, how often do your sheep have babies? So the question is how often do they have babies? My sheep on my farm, they only lamb once a year, but there is farms that will lamb their ewes twice a year or twice every three years, but mine, I just lamb once a year. Okay, and how many sheep do you have pregnant at a time, and how many lambs do you get? So, the question is, how many sheep do I have pregnant at a time, or how many lambs do I get? So on my farm, we run 250 ewes, and we average about 1.7 ewes, or lambs per ewe is how we do it, but mostly we try for every ewe to have twins. So all the ewes that have had a lamb before, so we call them like a yearling or two-year-old, they'll all pretty much have twins. The first timers, the ones that have never had a baby before, they normally just have one, which is what we like because then they can focus their attention on one. And then the ones that know what they're doing, they can have two and not be concerned. But sheep can have, like different breeds, can have up to five. You, it's often to have triplets, but some different breeds will have fours and fives and some have sixes. But. Those are different management styles than what I have. Yeah. Okay, so just today we talked a little bit about definitions mm -hmm. on um, the name of sheep. So I know you talked about ewes and yearlings, but yeah. maybe do you want to talk a little bit about um, what some of the different, uh, I guess, names and definitions So I'm going to talk a little bit about like the names here. So that's like a ewe describes a female and a ram is a male. And then a yearling is one. So we age the sheep by their teeth. So when they're born, they all have baby teeth. And then as they get past the years of age, they'll lose their middle teeth and then they'll get two big teeth and that's a yearling. So once they have two big teeth and then they're a year old, yearling, two year old, and then we pretty much identify them as like where their teeth set. And sheep only have eight teeth and they're only on the bottom. They have no teeth on the top. So after eight teeth, which is a four year old, it, you kind of guess the age of sheep after that. But on the terms, we use ewes, lambs, which are the babies, rams are the dads, yearling is one that normally hasn't had a baby before. What else do we use? And then a weather is a castrated male. So a lot of the lambs that go for meat, they're not for breeding purposes. So they get castrated and then they're, they're easier to handle. So then they just grow and they're not thinking about being a dad or anything. So sheep only have teeth on the bottom because they're ruminants, because they have four stomachs. So they graze the grass. So they don't need teeth on the bottom because they need to grind their food. 
So when they grab it, they swallow it pretty much whole, and then it goes down into their one stomach, and it's called regurgitation, so they kind of push it back up into their mouth and then chew it back down. So if they had teeth on the top, they would wear their teeth off too fast, so they just have a really thick gum at the top. So the question is about like what is a ruminant or other animals that are. So a ruminant is an animal that has four stomachs. That is mostly grazing animals. So goats, cows, sheep, I think an alpaca, horse, no, horses are monogastric. They only have one stomach. So there's four different stomachs that do four very different jobs. And it's because of the feed sources is why Cows and sheep have four stomachs because they eat a lot of grass. They need to break the grass down a lot to get all the nutrients out of it. So the more stomachs, the more processing it has to do, so the better feed they can consume. Okay, so sheep are herbivores. Yes. So that's why, like humans, we have two sets of teeth on the yep. top and bottom because we're omnivores. Okay, great. Um, any other um, questions that are, or things that you want to explain or? Um. So like this show here, this show is for, it kind of represents everybody's breeds. There's a bunch of different breeds here today and I don't know if they'll show you a bit more of it. But at this show we kind of show everything from lambs, so things born this year, and then we have everything up to, I think there's some five, six year old ewes here. So the really cool thing about these shows is you can get out and represent your flock and see how other people are. But then also tomorrow we have a sale so we can sell breeding stock to other farms and that's how we get in the good genetics for what we're trying to do is these types of events. So it's, that's the really nice thing about coming to these. But besides that, the sheep industry is growing a lot. This like in the last five years, I know in Manitoba, we've had about 300 new producers. So it is an increasing industry and, and like sheep are really, they're easy to look after. I made it sound a little bit like you have to watch them, but they're pretty easy and they're really like docile animals. They want to be your friends. Most of the time they really want to be around you, so. Okay, can you explain the difference between a herd and a flock? So the question is, what is the difference between a herd and a flock? It just means a group of animals. Mostly a sheep is called a flock and a cow is called a herd, but cow guys will call it a herd of sheep. and. It is to obtain to the what breed you're, or what animal you're trying to talk about, and herd is to cows and flock is to sheep, but it just is a group of animals. Okay. And then usually with a, a flock of sheep, um, I always think of sheep as, as um, not having a lot of defense mechanisms. So how do sheep defend themselves from predators? So the question is of how do sheep defend themselves from predators? Sheep, they they flock, they can run as a big group, and that's normally intimidating, but like at my farm, we run three guardian dogs for predators. So our guardian dogs, two of them work when there is a predator, say a coyote. Two of them will bring the sheep back to the barns and keep them in there, and then I have one dog that'll chase the predator away. But then people have used llamas and donkeys, alpacas. You can do lights, like lights that come on so that the predators can't see but I use dogs on my farm as protection animals. Okay, what type of dogs do you have? So the question is what type of dogs do I have? I have, I have three, I have two females and one male. The one female is a Great Pyrenees, and then the one male is a Marama, and then my dog is a Pyrenees Kuvas cross. So there's lots of different breeds, but really they're just big and white. Okay. So we, we make, a lot of the breeds of guardian dogs are white, so they blend in with the sheep, so the sheep aren't kind of nervous of them to start. So there's guardian dogs and herding dogs. I also run herding dogs, so I run border collies. But my guardian morning, dogs are all white. We'll be beginning the sheep show at 10 a.m. <laughs> We're waiting for the demonstration to finish up, and then we'll be beginning the sheep show at 10 a.m. Big, um, in comparison, are there other countries that are 
So the question is about like where does Canada stand in like the number of sheep we have? For the size of land we have and the number of sheep, we're low. So in like like my family's all from the UK, there is about for every one person there's seven sheep in Wales and England. And in Canada it's the opposite. There's a lot more people than sheep. So we are low for the land that we have, but then our land is used for a lot of other things like grain and all the other types of productions that we need. But we're on the rise, but we're still kind of on the lower standards of numbers. But we do have a lot of quality, and right now we've, we're working on importing sheep so we can bring the genetics from those other countries here. So hopefully we'll increase. Okay, do you name your sheep? The question is, do I name my sheep? My favorite ones, yes, yep. But a lot of them, they get like a little earring when they're born. It's called a tag, and that'll have a number on it. So a lot of my sheep run on just what number they are, but my favorite ones all have names. I have a mature ram named Cupcake. Okay. That's a great name for a ram. Okay. Well, um, is there any last parting words that you'd like to share? I could talk all day about sheep, but I think they're waiting for me to be done, so I have to go show my sheep here right away. So. Okay, well thank you so much Bethan, we really appreciate uh, you taking the time to talk to our classes about um, sheep and um, wool in Canada. Um, so with that, we'll end, but thank you so much for joining. Thank you.